What's going on guys? Welcome back to another episode of Slash and Cast. My name is Riley. That is Nick. Uh, today we're going to go over our top five worst horror remakes. Uh, what's interesting about our list is that it's very different than most simply because there's some remakes that we just haven't seen and there's a lot of them that aren't worth checking out. So things like One Missed Call isn't on here, or The Omen and things like that. While I've seen those movies, I don't think I've got enough respect for the original ones to truly judge them in a way to make a list like this. Yeah. Uh, and I think that's kind of our perspective. So these are the remakes that we've kind of seen the most and continue to either dislike or just realize they're bad. Yeah. Because uh, some of these I don't even really hate. I don't really hate many remakes. There's only <laughs> one on here. There's two on here that I really, really hate. Yeah, same. The other ones I can watch. I can get through them. Yeah. Um, but let's start with the number five. And I know some people are going to be upset about this. Again, this is just a personal opinion. And you can have any opinion you want. I don't really care if you like something or hate something. Um, just, just respect our opinion. I'll respect your opinion. That's, that's all I really ask. We can it's, have a discussion. Yeah, that's all it is. It's a discussion. This is just for fun, man. Uh, but you know, remakes get a lot of flack and sometimes they deserve it. Uh, yeah. as most of these probably do. <laughs> um, but let's start first. Our number five is Halloween. It's Rob Zombie's Halloween. And if the, f the second one could be on here, if that counts as remake, I'd put that as my number one spot probably. Yeah. Cause I hate the Halloween too. Rob Zombie's 2007 Halloween. I can get through, but the, the problem with it. Rob Zombie, I think, has a really creative and interesting image for film as a director. I think he kind of gets that. I think he has a very unique image, and it works mm -hmm. for him. Mm -hmm. The thing is, though, and good luck changing my mind, I think he's a horrible screenwriter. Mm -hmm. I think he's a terrible screenwriter, and I think he needs to let that fucking pen go, because he can only write one type of character, and that's a hillbilly-ish type downbeat neighborhood yeah. white trash kind of mm -hmm. you know and that's the only character he's got and that's fine there it works in certain things like uh house of a thousand maniacs it works right and we've seen that format work but taking something like halloween and john carpenter's original image and taking it and just literally throwing away everything that john carpenter created the point of halloween was that it was just some regular kid not not from a bad family just some regular midwest town suburban type of area mm -hmm. who just snapped and we're not supposed to like him we're supposed to fucking hate the guy he's supposed to be the essence of pure evil and that's that nothing triggered him he just just snapped and that's gone in this we're supposed to relate to him and, and feel for him and feel bad for him and right. I, I don't like that it's not what john carpenter into like that's not what he wanted right it just it didn't it didn't fit what what the original was and that's what every good remake should do i mean put your own personal touches on it but make sure you still pay homage to the original in a good way and and <laughs> there's no, it's not i'm sorry it's just not i mean they changed the whole they gave it an origin story or they gave it a background. yeah and i'm i'm down like you if you're gonna do a remake you should be something different and there's there's, a, there's one on here that it doesn't do that and right it's, it's shit it sucked because it doesn't do that and, you know, Rob Zombie took a turn, but it was kind of just the wrong turn. And it'd be one thing if you could run with it and write it well. <laughs> and But, like, the first time we see Lori, like, and we did, we did we just did a commentary on this. is why it's so fresh in my mind. But Scott Taylor Compton is a tremendous actress, and I have a lot of respect for her. But, like, the first time we see her, it's some stupid, weird dialogue with her mom. And then she starts fingering a bagel. And it's just like, that's how, that's my first impression of her. That, it's just her doing some stupid childish shit. Yeah, yeah that's... That's who I want to root for the entire film. Right. Like you and that, that kind of shit like that happens all the time. Or like when a spoiler, but like when Michael drops to his knees and is holding the picture up of, of them as a kid, like, come on, dude, you make him seem stupid then. Like what? It, just sit like that bothers me. It's just it's just literally ninety nine point nine nine percent screenwriting issues. Yeah, I agree. So just let the pen go, Rob. Let it go. Hire somebody else to write your ideas, right? What, right. You know, if you had somebody else write it, write, you know, this isn't Halloween. Take take your base of this movie of Hall of Halloween 2007, what it ended up being. Give it to another writer, and it's not Halloween at all. It's just some killer story. I think it'd be okay. Yeah, but even even then, yeah, like even then, even if it wasn't Halloween, and it was still. Rob Zombie writing that screenplay, and it still would suck. Right, give it to somebody else. Yeah, for give sure. it to somebody. You can, else. I mean, 
And there's nothing wrong with not liking a director. Like, we personally don't like Rob Zombie's Halloween, but we can respect House of a Thousand Corpses, Devil's I, Rejects. Again, I think his, I think even visually, it's not a bad film. I exactly. I think he gets it. I think he has a really unique image in terms of directing. But, like, he just can't write for shit. Right. He just, you ain't got it. Yeah. <laughs> he ain't so, got it. Let it go. Yeah, I mean, y- you can like it. Like I said, this is just in our opinion. You know, we can have a discussion in the comments if you want, but it's just our opinion. Now, yeah, it's, that's all it is. Nothing really more than that. If you like, some people like it more than Carpenters. Okay, and, and so be it. Sure, but I mean, what I don't, I disagree, but so be it. I mean, whatever. Yeah, <laughs> whatever you like, you like. I don't really care. <laughs> <laughs> all right, number four on our list is the 2008 remake of Prom Night. Uh, and you know, let me tell you one thing. I actually awkwardly enjoy this movie. Same. It, there's some weird nostalgia to it. Yes. But I know it's garbage. I listen. I know it's garbage. There's not a single fucking character that you give a shit about. Exactly. They try to throw one at you. And, you know, to be fair, the the first the original problem isn't all that great. It's a very uh, campy type of film, right? But like this remake, there's no one you care about. There's no one relatable, and there there was originally like a suspense type of element. And there's almost a who done it feeling from the original. Mm-hmm. That's not there in the remake. You know who it is. You know what's gonna happen, and you see these same cliche, stupid high school characters mm-hmm. that you don't care about. They try to make you care about. Uh, I'm zoning out her name, but the, they try to make you care about the the main girl, the the, the blonde girl, mm-hmm. and Maybe you get to that a little bit, but it's so forced because, like, hey, her parents died. You gotta like her. Hey, here's her mom's. Yeah. Here's her mom's scarf. You gotta like her. This is a really important moment. Yeah, <laughs> it's but it's not established. But those are the type of movies that we we do enjoy. Just just the the cheesiness and the campiness of it. Yeah. Um. So I like we said we we enjoy watching this prom night, but. We, we can acknowledge that it, it's not a no, good film. it's pretty film. fucking bad. It's pretty <laughs> garbage. I, I totally get why it makes list for being so bad, because it really is. It's not good, right. but I just, I, we could, I watch could watch it, no problem. Yeah. And, you know, keep in mind that one of our favorite films to sit down and watch for fun is I Still Know What You Last Summer. Yeah, it's bad. I know it's bad. I, I fucking watch it. I'm like, wow, that's really bad. And I'm like, you know what? I like it. I enjoy it. Yeah. <laughs> so, so be it. Whatever. Uh, we're switching to our next on our list at number three, the 2006 remake of When a Stranger Calls. Again, the original When a Stranger Calls, maybe not the best film, but there's something really dark and ominous about it, and there's a constant, really unique tension, and it, it terrified babysitters, um, especially considering you know Halloween, when it came along, it did the same type of thing and mm-hmm. scared babysitters, and it was really effective for that. Yeah. Oh, six one. I could watch it anytime, like I said, but it just kind of... It's it's one of those films that relies on hefty, shitty, loud music, where there's just constant dumb jump scares and fake jump scares like bushes. Yeah. Like one time she's walking by these bushes and she's go she like gets around them and then all of a sudden this music flares up and it's like, why? It's a bush. There's nothing more there than a fucking bush. Why are you? What are we doing here? <laughs> right. And I mean, it's 2006. Can you blame them? Like that's it's that time. Right. It's yeah. that time. But yeah, I mean, but we can still sit down and watch it and enjoy it for what it is. Yeah, and I, I still, again, this, it, it, I, I don't know if it became really cliche in our generation yet until this movie happened, um, but the whole idea of, like, the calls are coming from inside the house, I still, every time, man, it gives me goosebumps when I hear that line. Just, yeah. The calls are coming from inside the house. Oh, no, that's bad. Yeah. <laughs> and again, this isn't all that realistic now. Um, it's a whole different time, but mm-hmm. it it's, yeah, it's just kind of, it's neat to, to imagine that. That's a terrifying thing that it could, remains a scary urban legend today. Yeah. So seeing it in action, I still don't mind, but it just, the film is done very poorly, relying on really loud, hitting, shitty music. Not all that well acted. You don't really care about the main chick. I gotta be honest with you. And pretty much the whole movie, you're literally waiting and excited to hear this one line of the calls are coming from inside the house. Yeah. But again, uh, it we know what it is and we can watch it for what it is and still enjoy a time together. Yeah. I but for these next two, it's not the case. I actually hate these fucking next two. Okay, yeah. our number two, it, it's Psycho. It's the nineteen ninety eight Psycho. And this is coming for someone who fucking loves Psycho. I love the original Psycho. <laughs> and I'm not I'm not hating on it for a fanboy reason. I don't really care that they remade it. It's how they remade it. First of all, Vince Vaughn plays Norman Bates, which is just already questionable. What were you thinking? I'm I'm sorry, Vince Vaughn, but no. No, you're not you're not Anthony Perkins. No. And, 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 like, it was just weird. I mean, I get that Vince Vaughn is weird, and so was Anthony. Like, they have this kind of weird 40-year-old virgin type feeling. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, stay at home with mom type of feeling. I totally get it. They got that feel to him. Um, but, like, I don't know. It's just he, he was a little off in the first place. But then you get 
it's a, it's a shot for shot remake, frame by frame, the exact same movie, but in color. And not as well acted. Not as relatable and just not as stylistically pleasing. I don't understand. I can I can understand saying I mean, uh Hitchcock, like how can you, you know, improve or put your own spin? Why how can you change perfection? You don't. Yeah, you and don't you, make the movie. You don't make the movie at all. You don't you don't need to replicate perfection either right. cuz it doesn't need to be replicated. Cuz you, you didn't. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, no, it it just did not work. And and like we said before, you know, you can put your own spin on it. That's what a good remake should do. Pay homage and respect to the original while still putting your own unique spin on either the story or creativity-wise, whatever. Don't remake a film shot for shot in color. Just because you know a remake usually something like this going from 19 uh, 1960 to 1998 you got a 38 year jump mm-hmm. and usually when you do a remake the point is like we have better technology now we can do things that you couldn't do then with more more money now a bigger budget and arguably make a better film today <laughs> but add some stylistic changes and truly make a, a different film while being that film and, and that's just not what they did with here. It's just a mess. But could you even, could you make a, you know, a better psycho than Alfred Hitchcock did in 19, in the well, 60s? I, you know, we, we always talk about this when we have like remake discussions. Yeah. Like, can you even, can you even get an audience to buy into it? Can you even like, will an audience ever accept the fact that a remake is better? And sometimes they have, like you even see the remakes of Night of the Living Dead, like when Tom Savini dove into it, uh, well, with Return of the Living Dead and things like that. Like sometimes... It works, <laughs> and, and sometimes it doesn't. Right. It, it's just like it didn't warrant a remake. Obviously, look at what we got. I think some. I think a movie like this. I think a movie at, like Psycho, as big when it's a huge pop culture like phenomenon here. It's it's so big. I don't think you can remake it. The most successful remake, arguably of all time, is The Thing. John Carpenter's The Thing from '82. But it remade a movie that wasn't super popular. I mean, mm-hmm. yes, the thing from another world is popular in its own right, but like, no one was crying that it was getting remade, right? And how many of you just heard that for the first time? Yeah, right? some people don't even know it's a remake, right? I mean, I saw a thing from another world before I saw John Carpenter's The Thing, right? And I know, I mean, you, it's it's amazing. It's an amazing film and one of the best remakes of all time. I mean, we can have a discussion about that later. Yeah, we'll, t- we'll dive into this some other time. But, uh, but yeah, like, John Carpenter did, I mean, look at it. Just look at it. It could, can you, another question, separate. Can you, do you think we could ever see a Alfred Hitchcock movie be remade as well as the original by anybody? If And if you do, who do you think could do it? Well, like, like look at films like, like, The Birds, okay, from like 63. Mm-hmm. Like, The Birds, now you would think would work a lot better because you could make a much more believable mm-hmm. birds, even though like, there were some real birds and thing. Like, like she got her ass whooped at some times, yeah. <laughs> which is kind of one of those Hitchcock moments where he's an asshole. Right. But like, yeah, there's just, there's some things where it's sometimes it's too fake to buy into and that wouldn't be the case today. You could literally make some very realistic and scary shit, but like, would you be able to buy in? I don't, it's hard. It's, uh, I mean, I know we're still on number two, but quick question. Jordan Peele, Remaking Psycho, can he do it? No, probably not. Like, I don't think you... You might be able to make something that people will... But I, like, Bates Motel worked. Right, but that was... It wasn't a remake. It was a p- prequel. Yeah, but, like, you'd have you'd have to do it something like that. I don't think you could literally remake the story that we know it, as Psycho. Right. You have to expand on it, like Bates Motel did. Right. I agree. I don't think that that even Jordan Peele, you know, this this king of horror nowadays, people call him the modern-day Hitchcock. I don't even think he could touch a Hitchcock film Yeah, as a remake. I, I, just, I don't think anybody can. Yeah, it was just a bad idea all It was just a different time and you know, a different product, and Alfred Hitchcock, man. Yeah. It's sometimes, uh, sometimes it's just not worth touching, and it didn't work. It was really it was just a giant experiment. Like, could a shot for shot remake work? Absolutely not. And, and now you know we know now it doesn't work. Don't do that again. <laughs> um, okay, our number one, uh, and this one, this is like some people love this film, and I I know I have friends of mine that love this film. I fucking don't get how our number one choice is Nightmare on Elm Street, the 2010 remake. And and it's not because Elm Street couldn't get a good remake. It's not that. It's because they fucking did it. Horribly, all right. They fucking did a horrible job. Um, 
I'm zoning out her last name, but Rooney, uh, the the main chick mm-hmm. that plays Nancy, she. It's amazing because she went on to win awards, not for this role, but she went on to be amazing, an amazing actress. But she sucks in this movie. I Absolutely. Don't, she's just so bad. You can't relate to her at all. She's just all, so bland. I mean, all the characters were the, were the same. They just were all just bleh, and they weren't developed very well, and they weren't likable. Yeah. And except you know, for you, you're the person you're not supposed to. Well, I mean, in the case of Nightmare on Elm Street, you are supposed to like Freddy. Well, not in this one. Well, it's a little bit of a different story in the a, remake. <laughs> right, but... <laughs> it's a little bit of a different story right, in the remake. But, but yeah, in the original, you're supposed to, you're supposed to like Freddy. Yeah, you're supposed, to, you're supposed yeah. to enjoy Freddy's company. Yeah. Yeah, he's supposed to be funny. And it, like that. But like, not in the original, not so much. He was scary. It, it, yeah. it changes through the franchise, but... Yeah. It, yeah. It, it, I kind of... I like the idea that they were going to take it back and he was going to be scary again. Mm-hmm. But like... There's no relatable characters. You kind of don't give a shit about any of them. And then you follow Chris for a good chunk of the movie. Uh-huh. But then she's then she suddenly killed off, and then we go to Nancy, and then we're like, well, oh, all right. Oh, I... Th- it, this was, this- it was like psychoing us, like, with how they did with Jana Lee, but just not in the same manner. Like, it just wasn't as... Because you didn't jump to a character you liked, <laughs> and that's a problem. Right. I mean, uh, even, like, Terrifier that came out a couple years ago, yeah. like, they they sort of did the same thing, where you jumped to your... You, you killed your main character off, spoiler alert, sorry, but, like, they killed your main character off, and now you're with somebody that you don't really know that well at that point of time, and you're like, oh, oh okay. Yeah. Like, I thought that was our main character. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, but it, so you gotta make sure you make another well-developed character, and that's just not what Nancy is. Yeah. You kind of just... Like, wow, can you quit being such a bitch? Like, can you fucking ease up a little bit? Yeah. Uh, but like I said, that a- she's amazing as an actress. She went on to do incredible things. Mm-hmm. But just not here. Not here. Uh, in terms of things that were changed in the original to be better, you- Freddy is straight up a pedophile now. Um, that was kind of hinted at in the Nightmare on Elm Street series, but not distinctly said. Right. Um, he's very much pedophile in this one uh, uh, to a very, very dark level. Yes. Which, fine. That's a, that's a decision you got to make, but you got to run with it. But, like, uh, it's just, that's, like, the biggest change. It seems like the only time that this remake threw a punch was when it was recreating scenes from the original. Mm -hmm. But it did it so much worse than the original did. Dude, it it makes me fucking sick every time I see that above the bed, above Nancy, um, where he comes out of the wall, you know? Yeah. And the original was done with just, like, fucking spandex. He goes through, like, a stretchy screen, Mm -hmm. and that's all it was. In the remake, it is a CGI fiasco, and it looks fucking stupid. Yes. It looks so bad. He comes all the way down the wall and comes down the side of her bed, and it's like, why? That is just not effective. No, and like, it looks so bad. No, like, at the end of the film, they're like, we have some money left over for CG. What do we want to do? And they're just like, I'll throw it all right there. <laughs> That's literally, like, what had to have happened. There's a bunch of CGI. You can even see, like, when the, at the beginning when he slits uh-huh. his throat, that CGI, and it, it looks shitty. And then you have, like, the one time I'm like, yeah, that's pretty dope is when Chris gets killed, actually, because you re- you're recreating the scene where she's flying around the room. And so mm-hmm. not done in the same way it was in the original. In the original, the, there's a, a built set spinning, you know, and she actually was getting, like, I don't Thrown. Even, yeah, I don't even know what, she was getting, like, a, it's not, like, claustrophobic. It's kind of like that. It's kind of like uh, Vertigo, actually. She was kind of, like, having Vertigo, because you can't tell which way is up. Yeah. You know, when you're in an upside-down house, you're standing on the ceiling, it could throw you off. It really is a fucking weird feeling. Right. Uh, yeah, and that's how they did it in the original, and it's just, there's something scary about that, there, and there's something inevitable about it. And that's just, the whole feeling is just lost. I don't know, man. It's the remake, I, I think, is really bad. It's funny, because most people that shit on it are like, you can't replace Robert England. You can't replace Robert England. And, and you can't. You can't replace Robert England. I right. get that. But, like, Jackie Earl Haley is the best part of the movie. He really is. Uh, yeah, he's he is the best performance given. And, I mean, like... Freddie, I mean, Robert England's personality, I mean, yeah, you can't replace that. But he did a very good job. Yeah, he's scary. He did it well. The problem is he was just given a shitty script to work with. Yeah. That's all That's all that is. I think he'd be great. And I think if you got in a position where you had to replace Robert, like, forever now, I know he's talking about doing another one, but if they want to do another franchise, I, I don't think Jackie or Haley is a, bad, is a bad choice. I think he did all right. I don't know if it's true. Somebody, kind of shitty. Somebody was saying that Robert England wants Kevin Bacon to be the next... Freddy Krueger. Hmm. I, I I don't know. I don't know off the top of my head if uh, Robert England likes Jack Earl Haley's portrayal. I, I don't know off the top of my head. I, I think I've seen him like discuss the remake some, and I think he was... I don't know if he's ever, ever specifically addressed like Haley directly. The performance. Yeah, I'm sure he has somewhere at, at some sort of convention. Yeah. Um, 
but yeah, now off the top of my head, I'm not sure what he what he said. I think Robert always has kind of given respect to it, but he's always given reasons like you know I just don't think it worked because of these reasons. Yeah, um, he's a nice fellow though. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's just it's a re it's a messy remake. It's poorly written, poorly <laughs> acted, poor CGI, no real benefit in terms of the change that they added. Right, there was nothing that really added to the story with those changes. And yeah, you just didn't give Jackie or Haley a good script to work with, which is a dude. I don't remember that when this. You probably wouldn't remember. It was two thousand nine, two thousand ten, when the trailers came out. But like the trailers were actually fucking good. And I remember that that line: "The why are you screaming? I haven't even cut you yet." You know, like that line. Like that was so impactful, and everyone mm-hmm. loved those trailers. But then it came out, and it sucked. <laughs> yeah, like you said, you can you can like it. You can say it's better than the original. But we're gonna disagree with you there, Chief. Yeah, I think it's I think it's just a fucking disgrace to, to Wes Craven's original. I, I think it really is. I think it's just a fucking complete mess. And I don't know. I I think my biggest issue with it is that CGI. Like, mm-hmm. how can you go in there and make that fucking garbage ass bedroom CGI scene and be like, yeah, yeah, that looks great. That's totally as good as the yep. original. Yeah, go, come on. No, it's stupid. I I I hate that remake. It's it's so bad. And I love Nightmare on Elm Street. So it hurt to see that. Yeah. But hey, that's our list. Let us know yours. I know there's a ton of bad remakes out there. Some that are I would I would agree with you that are probably worse than what we said. Yeah, and definitely give us uh give us some that we missed and we'll definitely, you know, check them out and and then Well, I don't I don't want to. <laughs> we're not going to, but, but we're going to check them out and then see if we agree with you. Yeah, it's like uh, yeah, because I know I know one missed call is bad. I know the omen is bad. Mm-hmm. I know Wicker Man's bad. I totally fucking sit there and I can agree with you, but I just like don't know how to to judge them properly compared to the original because right. I've only seen them like one time when I was like five. Yeah, and I, I don't think that's fair. So this is a list that I'm very confident that I could judge properly and have seen the original <laughs> and the remake enough times yeah. to sit here and shit on. We'll we'll come back <laughs> to this in a year or so. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see what the, how the <laughs> list changes across time. I'm sure make every death count our new podcast available now on all. Podcasts podcasting platforms specifically an apple podcast and anchor.fm you should go check those out yeah i'll uh, link in in the description but uh yeah i'm sure we'll dive onto it in there again yeah maybe we'll have a discussion about this video like next week on make every death count we'll talk about the video that we did i'm down yeah there you go let us know your uh list in the comments below that's a wrap today's video if you enjoyed make sure you drop a like and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this one and of course as always thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you next time.